Hey everybody, Randall Schwartz back again with another tip or trick or technique around the world of Dart and Flutter. Today I want to cover something that uh, is still a little rough, not terribly polished, but I need this video and an answer to a question on LinkedIn uh, that I tried to answer yesterday. And also something that Simon Lightfoot and I have been working together on in some uh, casual pair programming sessions recently uh, over the last week or so. So it's a little rough, but uh, if you'll bear with me for a minute, I can talk about uh, solving a very interesting problem about making responsive layouts. So here I have an app, nice little app, um, and I want to follow the material guidelines for a small versus a medium versus a large layout based on the uh, effective widths of the screen. So what I've done to do that is here it is in operation. I'm basically making it go small and then bigger medium and bigger large. Now the key to this is that even though the size is changing pixel by pixel by pixel, I don't want to keep rebuilding all my widgets, which would occur if I only used media query of, or even media query size of. Both of those are triggering a rebuild of everything that they're, that's watching them at every single change. But I don't want that. In fact, if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, you see that I'm only building the widget once as I'm changing it. So as I get to the medium widget, it goes, okay, disposing the large, building the medium. And as I get to the small one, disposing the medium and building the small. So how do I achieve that? And that's the key to, to this particular chat. So I've got some boilerplate here. I'll skip past all that. Nothing really to reveal there. Here is the core of my top level widget. So we're going to have um, three different sizes of widgets we can possibly create. And I'm doing this using tear-offs. The reason is that I want to pass the building instruction down to this function that I'm going to invoke later, rather than build them all and pass them all down into some sub-widget that's going to select one of the three that now has already been built. So we want to defer the building until we know which of these, and we also don't want to rebuild it if, it, uh, if nothing's changed enough to cause us to need that rebuild that. Uh, let's first look at one of the widgets so you can see what's going on. They're all pretty much identical code. Small here, stateful widget. Uh, we have init state and dispose. Those are for printing the uh, diagnostics down here at the bottom. And also, we're passing in a single int parameter. And I did that so I can show how to deal with constructors that need parameters using this strategy. The other two don't have that, just to make it even simpler there. So uh, down in my build here, yes, indeed, I've got a colored box that's red uh, and has the, the I value that I passed into the widget. Medium and large, pretty much the same thing, except they don't have any parameters at all. And they just simply say medium for the text or large for the text. So that's the three items that would then have our further detailed layout for each of those sizes. So this would be like the top level. You'd probably drop a uh, scaffold or something below this. To, uh, and your router would all be below that and so on. So oh, actually the router would probably be above this, but uh, let's not get too deep into that sort of wood. So now let's go back again, look up at how this is done. So large.new is the same as saying, give me a function that returns an instance of uh, a large constructed. And medium.new is the same way. Uh, these are calling, again, the default constructor for each of these classes. And again, just for grins, I created a function inside here called make a small. And its entire job is to return a small constructed. But notice I'm passing it 24. So I'm handing the 24 down directly. And because I have a const constructor here, 
I can also use this as a const constructor in there. So the key here is that make a small is parallel to medium.new and large.new in that it is a function that when invoked will return the widget I want to do. Okay, now let's go down into this responsive top level and see where the magic is. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Down and down we go. Okay, here's responsive top level. We have three required parameters, small, medium, and large. And notice that the definition of each of those is that they are a function that when invoked will return a widget. So that's essentially what a widget constructor is. It's essentially what my function that returns a widget is. It's what every factory uh, constructor is for widgets and sub-widget classes and so on. We also, this is a stateful widget. We're going to hold two items in state. We're going to hold the builder that we ultimately end up choosing between small and medium and large. And then we're also going to hold the built widget that came from that. This is the core of how this works. We're going to pick a builder. If it's the same as what we had before, we'll just use the already built value. But if it changes, either because it's still medium, but it's a different medium, or because we switch from medium to small, then we're going to go ahead and build it. And we're going to do that by having the new builder be selected based on the constraints of max width from the, our layout builder. And this is using the new switch pattern. So we're using, if it's less than 600, we take the small. If it's less than 840, we take the medium and otherwise we take large. If the new builder that we just picked out of this switch is different from the builder we've already saved, initially, of course, that's null. So it's always going to run the first time. So we're always going to have a non-null value at this point. Then what we do is we save the builder away from the new builder. And then we built, as in create, this new builder by invoking it. Notice there are no arguments ever to this level. The argument of 24 got passed in and built in inside the closure that this now is. So that's how that works. And ultimately, we return built. Now, this mechanism then will allow us to change the size of our window. And the, this code will only build again, will only run this new builder function when we've crossed from one boundary to another or when the builder function being passed in for that size has changed. You want to be sure to update when either of those happen. And that's all there is to it. Again, looking at it once again, if we watch the scroll down here, let me pull up my function there again. And just to prove that this is building it a minimal amount of times, I'm basically taking the seconds past the hour or seconds past the top of the minute. And I'm displaying that there, which means we're rebuilding this overall widget over and over again. I could turn on the debug display to show you that the rainbow is just constantly moving forward. It's, it's building every tick, basically. It's because I'm using a ticker. So um, here we go. And as we scroll it to bigger and smaller, again, we're only rebuilding the medium or the small or the large widget exactly once. And everything works just fine. I hope you've enjoyed that little demonstration. And uh, I'll see you next time. Please like and subscribe, and if you feel so motivated, please buy me a coffee and or uh, join my Patreon. Really appreciate it. Thank you much.